I'm Larry Walther, and this is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com, Chapter 1. In this particular module, we will look at how transactions impact the fundamental accounting equation. Recall from a previous video, the fundamental accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Now, thinking about how transactions interface with the accounting equation, let me begin by saying that business activity impacts assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity accounts in unique ways depending on the particular transaction. Activity will not disturb the fundamental accounting equation. After a transaction we would expect assets to equal liabilities plus owner's equity. We will look at four examples to show how this is true. The first one is fairly simple. Adelice Corporation collects $10,000 on an existing account receivable. An account receivable is an amount that is owed to a company by a customer for goods or services that were provided in the past. So in this particular case, looking at the balance sheet, we can see that cash goes up $10,000 with the collection of the account receivable and accounts receivable goes down $10,000. Before the transaction, cash was $25,000. After the indicated transaction, cash was $35,000. And accounts receivable before the transaction was $50,000. After the indicated transaction, it's only $40,000. But notice total assets are, are not affected by that particular transaction. $895,000 before and $895,000 after. There's no effect on liabilities or equity in this particular case, so the fundamental accounting equation is preserved. Moving on to another example, Edelweiss Corporation purchases $30,000 of equipment and agrees to pay for it later. Now, looking at the complete balance sheet, notice that equipment, which was $250,000, is now $280,000, an increase of $30,000. And notice that loans payable that were $125,000 are now $155,000, an increase of $30,000. That describes the effect of the transaction on the balance sheet, but what's most important to note is now total assets are 925, total liabilities and total equity equal 925. The equality was maintained. Now, Edelweiss Corporation did work for a customer in exchange for the customer's promise to pay $5,000 at a later date. In this case, we say that Edelweiss has generated revenues of $5,000. Revenues are the enhancements or inflows from providing goods and services to customers. Revenues contribute to income, income contributes to retained earnings, part of the stockholder's equity. So the net effect on the balance sheet of this particular transaction, notice that accounts receivable, which was $40,000, now is $45,000, and retained earnings, which was $600,000, is now $605,000. The equality, again, is maintained that the assets are now 930, as is the liabilities plus owner's equity. Finally, let's look at Edelweiss Corporation, which paid $3,000 for expenses. Expenses are the cost incurred in producing revenues. So in this particular case, $3,000 was paid out. Cash dropped by $3,000 from $35,000 to $32,000. That resource consumption caused income to go down, which also caused retained earnings to go down. So the retained earnings of the corporation, instead of being $605,000, is now only $602,000. But, once again, the fundamental accounting equation, after the indicated transaction total assets, $927,000, still equal total liabilities plus stockholders' equity. Finally, let me review the terms revenue and income. I've already used those in this lecture. I've introduced the terms. They are not synonymous. Oftentimes people will mistakenly use them in similar ways. But actually, revenue is the top line. It's the gross amount that's provided, the total amount that's generated from providing goods and services to customers. Whereas income is the bottom line or the amount that results after subtracting expenses from revenues, which gives rise to another accounting equation. Revenues minus expenses equal income. Uh, so we want to begin to use those terms in their precise context as we move forward in our study of accounting. Let me close this lecture by saying I well remember going through this many years ago as a student myself, and although I could understand the fundamental accounting equation in theory, it took me quite some time to begin to grasp how specific transactions occur and affect the financial statements in a way that does not dislodge that, uh, that relationship that's present in the fundamental accounting equation. So don't be frustrated if it takes you a while to get your arms around this in total. It's simply part of the learning process for this subject matter.